Hello there, I'm your host Dan Rojas, and today we're going to be melting some steel with the large Fresnel lens. I'm next to a belt sander. I'm going to be harvesting some of the steel from some old rusty bolts to get us some metal to melt. I'm going to be taking this large rare earth magnet and carefully placing it on this steel backing. I don't want it to grab the belt because it'll stop the sander in its tracks. You want to be real careful anytime you put magnets next to these not to have the power on when you hook the magnet up because it can actually uh, squeeze your hand to the belt sander. You saw how hard it was for me to get that off. And if this was on, it would pretty much uh, grind your fingers down to nothing. So we're going to be grinding back here. So I'm going to let that cool down, unplug the belt sander, and we're going to take this around back and melt it. So what I'm doing is pulling all of the metal fragments off. And I'm going to spread it around. This way we can separate any of the non-magnetic stuff that may have been picked up from the belt sand from the belt itself. So we've got it there and we'll get everything back on there. So this should be mostly metal filings.
we now have steel merged into one. We've melted them together. I'm going to have a go at the screw in this focal point. First, I'm going to actually try to weld the screw to this rod. Let's see if we can do it. You can't melt a giant block of steel with the Fresnel lens because even though the temperature is enough to do it, the steel will actually transfer the heat into the whole block. So the focal point might be 3000 degrees, but steel is a very good conductor, especially a big chunk of it. It basically just transfers the heat outward into the entire block. And there's, you would need, in order to melt that piece about that size, you need a Fresnel lens that's about the size of a house. with a perfectly optical focal point. So I'm gonna show you how much heat that's stored. That's been under the sun for about 10 minutes.
This is the welding job we did today. This is a rare earth magnet. I'm gonna show you how when you heat it up, it loses its magnetic field. And it's no longer magnetic. I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to just see what happens. I'm going to leave it under there. So this is our rare earth magnet that was highly magnetic before. We heated it up and it has zero magnetic field now. It's completely just a hunk of metal. The last thing we're going to do is melt some tin. This is good stuff for casting actually because it's got a low melting point. lower melting point. Going all Terminator on these. I don't know if you can see that, but there is a beautiful I think it's going to go down in the bucket. Tin is an excellent metal because you can melt a lot of it. If you put it in a crucible, you can melt several pounds of this stuff. It is worth noting that the tin does contain some levels of lead to it. This is what happens when you drop it in water. You get these really cool flat nuggets. They just explode when they hit the water. And the explosion is kind of captured in the form of metal. So there you go. It's pretty cool. And of course, you have this beautiful, shiny, finish on the one that stayed on the uh, counter. So you can see that this stuff, you, you see I picked picked up the texture of the, the cement perfectly. It's not super sturdy, but if you wanted to make some art, this stuff has a very, very reasonable melting point. This is not a big Fresnel lens that I have. It's maybe a uh, 28 by 36 or something like that. So this is a smaller Fresnel lens.